Welcome to wizardsnorman.com, where we have our first FNM recordings. Uh, I'll be joined today by Daniel Dusang of Planeswalker Asylum fame. Hello, Daniel. Hello. Uh, so what we have here today is uh, Brian Alcorn, the owner and proprietor of Wizards Asylum here in Norman, up against Brian Dish. Um, he has you know, been playing a lot recently and a uh, pretty good indicator of what you can expect You know, your first few times here at FNM. Uh, Brian is on a Bant mid-range deck. Brian Alcorn, that is, on the left. Yes. yes. Bant mid-range on your left, and on your right, you've got your typical, well, also excellent Gruel aggro deck. Uh, <laughs> pretty quick. Beat uh, down. Beat down time. Brian is going to... Brian dishes on a mole. Uh, so, what do you what do you think about uh, any chance that Alcorn brings up, hey, I own this shop, so I have to win? Well, is that going to happen here? This stuff is already taking place off camera, so Dish is already, <laughs> you know, we already know what's going to happen yeah. here. Um, uh, Try to act surprised. Exactly, guys. yeah. And uh, another per perk here is that uh, Brian Dish actually works at the Warren Theater out here in Norman. Oh. And uh, so it's, it's even. Alcorn's going to get the win, but he might also, you know, work out some kind of deal with, you know, send some customers his way or something like that. So everybody's happy at the end of the day. I believe right now Brian is pointing out the fact that, or Alcorn is pointing out the fact yeah. that Dish's sleeves are not all facing the same direction. Yeah. So if you're at FNM and you have uh, sleeves that have a picture on them, make sure that your sleeves are all facing the right direction. Exactly. Uh, that's a way that some people who are actually trying to cheat uh, will mark cards exactly. is by making the picture face a different way. Exactly. So well, they're both they're both, they're both decided to keep their hand. Uh, and yeah, very quickly, we've just got your first turn lands here. Uh, Dish obviously doesn't have first turn play, so he's going to let Flank come and play tapped. And uh, we'll see what Alcorn wants to do here. <laughs> so Alcorn led with a breeding pool. He's on a Bant Zagana deck here, right? Uh, I don't... He, 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 he definitely has Prime Speakers. Yeah. 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 Uh, strong start, Farseek. That's exactly yeah. what you want to be doing in a deck like this. Yes. Is, uh, so the the, hall, the earmarks of this deck are uh, Drag Tusk, Restoration Angel, and Prime Speaker Zagana to refill your hand mm -hmm. after you've curved out with value creatures. Exactly. It's also got a few counter spells. Definitely has Sphinx's Revelations in it, as we see on the bottom mm -hmm. of the deck there. It's got a Detention Sphere. Yep. Um, it's also got Azorius Charm as one of the most versatile spells in the format. Yes. And that's uh, that's something that Dish is going to have to work out, look out for over the course of this game. <clears throat> Those Azorius Charms can really do a number on an aggro deck exactly. plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially when you're hoping to chain, you know, certain... I mean, you, they run, like, you know, four copies of maybe, what, six creatures or something like that? Sure. Uh, yeah, so wiping a board of, yeah, Blade Tusk War or yeah. anything like that. So, Foot of War to start board, things right? off. Yeah. Foot of War to start things off, uh, <clears throat> I think Dish really wanted... He would have liked a, a start that included a Burning Tree Emissary, yep. as that's easily the most powerful card in these Gruel decks, mm -hmm. and the Mono Red decks. Exactly. Um, so does Dish's deck have a little more green than the kind of Saito red decks that were splashing it? Um, I don't think so. Uh, the green things he's got includes obviously the Plunder Board mm -hmm. that we see right here. Uh, he'll probably resolve the Domery at some point. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's green in the deck. Well, if he's playing Domery, he's probably playing a little heavier green. Yeah. The, the burn decks. The, the oh, he's got red the, decks that, that four four with trample. Ramp. Uh, yeah, playing ramp. There it is. Yeah. yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy's a house. Most certainly. So Alcorn here is representing Restoration Angel, as well as a hundred other things yep. out, of the, out of the blue deck. Let's see what Dish wants to do in the face of it. Plays a Lightning Mauler. Looks like he's going to Soul Bond. There he goes. You know, try to get him for a little more damage. Now here, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't make this play into Restoration Angel, because Restoration Angel just comes down and eats that pig. Yep. Um, now that leaves, up, that leaves the Lightning Mauler up. It's actually kind of a tough decision as what to block for Alcorn here. Right. Um, because that, that pig's always going to have haste, but the Lightning Mauler is going to give... You know, the next, Anything, the next yeah, the next thing has, yeah. exactly, yeah. But either way, that's a that's a that's kind of a that's kind of a bad attack. I mean, Brian uh, uh, Dish doesn't really have any 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 other options, right. um, but he may want to try to save an attack like that into a known Restoration Angel yeah. until he has like a Searing Spirit of Vengeance, exactly, yeah, or, or a Rampage or a Rampage and hand yeah, yeah, to both, exactly, yeah, exactly, and Thrak Dusk, and yeah. things are looking grim for Brian Dish, yes. <laughs> Brian Alcorn goes into, yeah, <laughs> no room on the die wipe mode. <laughs> We're using those giant uh, yes. D20s that we yes. sell here at the shop. Those, exactly. look, those look really good on camera. I yeah, actually thought do. those were like a, a superimposed graphic nope. design thing that you did. Nope, not, not today. today. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, let's see what this lightning mower can get paired up with. Actually, a Gorkman and Rampage would be really good here. Like, just hard casting it, Exactly, right? like, yeah. You sold on that with the lightning mower, and then just... 
guess crash. Swing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll just you would swing with just the rampage. Of course. I think. Right. Yeah, try yeah. to get through that. Try just to try to kill that th the first half of that drag mm -hmm. dust. You want what you want here is like you want a searing spear after this rampager. So we got three monies and we got Domery. Here he is. There's a big guy. A little, little guy. He doesn't look too big. No, he's not. All right. So I think Domery's got to tick up here because obviously there's nothing to fight. So we gotta try to draw. We gotta try to draw something. Now Domery's not. Oh yeah. Here he goes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you at home, that's Nash Zealot. Yeah. There we go. Okay. That's a, that's a decent draw. I mean, Domery's already gotten some value. That's one of his real problems um, in the format right now. I think yeah. is that he uh, he's he doesn't do anything with the card when you miss, exactly. which is the problem. Yes. Yeah. So like in the late game when you're topping lands with that Domery raid. Uh, it's it's not really helping you. Right. <laughs> it's like, oh, I know I have a great next turn. <laughs> <Exactly>. Womp, womp. <laughs> yeah. Now there's me putting on the, the easier to see die. You're welcome, yeah. home viewers. <laughs> We're going to get a Tarmo die? <laughs> start doing modern on these things? Sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't really tell, but Alcorn's hand is just full of action. Uh, oh, he's sure got some Black like Angels, Serenity. Uh, he's cast three spells this game. <laughs> yeah. <I> mean, <laughs> and they're all the stone nuts against this yeah. deck. So he doesn't really need to do anything else right now. The, the, the game was looking rough for Brian uh, pretty much from the outset. I mean, he, he didn't lead as aggressively as obviously he'd like to. And you, uh, To beat this band deck like, with as powerful a top end as it has and as much life gain as it can put out, uh, you really have to uh, get in underneath it. Yes. Uh, with, with an aggro deck like this, you have to go one drop, two drop, three drop. You just have to curve out. Right. Just, just perfect. And try to get as much haste on the table as quickly as possible. Exactly. Yep. Um, before they, before they can, or while they're setting things up, you know, casting their far seeks mm -hmm. and maybe drawing cards with Think Twice or stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and that, that's gross. <laughs> Yay, Selesnya Charm. Kill that Domri. Yep. Yeah, so now he's, now he's down a Planeswalker and a creature, and it's, yeah. I think it's, we're about we're about done here. This is, uh, the writing's on the wall as far yeah. as this game's concerned. And it looks like he has resolved a. That's a far seek. Far seek. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of glare, but he yeah. searched for a land. So. Um, surely he's not playing Borderland. Right there. <laughs> 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 and getting and getting the shock in the garden. Yeah, the uh, owner owner. Yeah, owner these, are, these are house rules. Yeah. <laughs> uh, last question. <laughs> So it would it would I mean you know kind of kind of written dish off at this point but it really would take a, a miracle and no I'm not talking bonfire no miracle. no I'm talking Mother Teresa style yeah, yeah. miracle to get him out of this game which is to say two consecutive bonfires <laughs> 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 well but bonfire doesn't really do it right now because you can't no, do it, 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 it yeah, yeah you're right so we're like I mean this Ashley can kind of help him on the ground like he can. Uh, he can block the Thragtus next turn, mm -hmm. and maybe well he can't now because he's tapping his mana. And I was thinking Searing Spear. Exactly. Oh hey, there's that there's that Burning Tree. I'm yep. sorry that he wanted on turn. And then Searing Spear. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So a decent player here from yeah. Dish. I mean, what else is he gonna do, right? Sure. It, t it just takes a bunch of cards from his deck to do much of anything to any of uh, Brian's plans. And yeah. Even at that, all he's done is uh, killed half the Thragtus. And uh, Alcorn. Bringing in his uh, Jace Bellerin rookie card. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the altar that he had done a yes. couple of years ago. I that's will, one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll see this closer up on the camera here in a few minutes. I pick it up because it, it deserves some. Oh yeah, you right. definitely need some love. And that's a Gavany Township out of Alcorn is right for the turn. That's that's the other power, super powerful backup plan that this uh, Zagana mm -hmm. deck has. Exactly. Is when you're when you're done drawing a thousand cards, or if you don't really want to draw cards that turn, because you know why would you? Right. <laughs> uh, then you can just start pumping up all your dudes. Yeah. Yeah. And when you accelerate into activating it with Farseek, I mean, it, Oops. yeah, it puts it puts a rule <laughs> on a really short clock because as soon as he starts doing that, uh, their little yeah. guys just don't stand a chance. Uh, Alcorn has resolved into the glare zone, uh, an angel of serenity, yeah. uh, and he's just gonna it's, uh, nom some dudes up. Yeah, it's a uh, when when you when you can cast a spell that is both a five six flyer and a wrath of god, yeah. a one sided wrath of god yeah. at that. Uh, your deck's doing really powerful things. Yeah. Angel of Serenity is one of the most ridiculous creatures in the format right now. Yep. Even at seven mana, easily castable for most decks that yes. have it in there. Yes. It's just a, a super game changer every time it hits the table. <laughs> yep. My OCD is not allowing me to stay on the table. <laughs> oh, there goes the rookie card. It's even foil. It's it so is. Good. You'll get to see it. It's so Don't good. worry. You'll get to see it. Another Ash Zealot. All right. Well, this is decent. No, it's not. 
Not even it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean it's, it's irrelevant. Yeah, it's like just just saying like yeah. it's a first striker, so he yeah, can yeah, yeah, yeah. No, on the ground. He's a good dude on turn yeah. two. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, what it comes down to is we've reached the turn numbers where this, oh, yeah. if he hasn't won by now, it's just going to be it, it's going to take a lot for him to do it, and oh, yes. Alcorn just has so much on his side. Of yeah, I mean that's that's eight in the air alone. Yeah, <clears throat> right. Like he has to chump block with the Ash Zealot. Yeah, yeah. And man, just, and you know, can he can tell, and uh, you know, good sportsman he is. Says, let's go to the next one. So yeah, anyway, yeah, 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 look at it. Fits Keep right in. Stars. Fits right in. From uh, from uh, what what what? Damn, yeah, what was the name of that team? Uh, the Expos. The, yeah, the yeah. Montreal Expos before oh, yeah. they before they became the uh, Washington Nationals. Uh huh. The Montreal Expos. Uh, as soon as, as soon as he left, so they Montreal was like, we don't we don't need this <laughs> uh, anymore. Oh, Bellerin's not here Didn't anymore. Crap <laughs> America, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> So, all right, so sideboard options here. Um, I don't remember exactly what uh, the Zagana deck has in its sideboard. I think I think it's probably got uh, some sort of Centaur Healer and or um, Rock's Faithmender yeah, set of cards yeah, in it. I, yeah, that might be right. I think he's just getting Supreme Verdicts, but I, I don't the, know. Those two. You, yeah. definitely bring in, you definitely bring in Supreme Verdicts. And he verdicts. brings in the big spider guy. Yeah, just in case. So uh, out of this red-green deck, since it's a little bigger, he saw Dom Raid in the first mm -hmm, game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a little bigger than the burn deck. So he could very easily have Thunderball Hellkites in this deck, mm -hmm. and uh, that can be a that can be a pretty big problem if uh, if he gets him if he gets him low enough and if if Dish gets Alcorn low enough in the first few turns, that Thunderball Hellkite can just you know hit the table, tap all of his possible blockers, and, right. and, and get in there for a lethal. Exactly. Even even after like resolving a Thrag Tusk, so it's a it's a having having a, a two seven that can Hurricane is a big game. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, as far as Dish goes, I think uh, the, these decks tend to have a few different options. Um, the the best options that he really has, I think, are to bring in cards like uh, Traitor's Blood mm -hmm. and Zealous Conscripts. Yes. So uh, since he has Domri in his deck, I would expect it to be Zealous Conscripts instead of Traitor's Blood, uh -huh. Uh -huh. since uh, the Domri can actually hit one of those cards exactly. and not the other yeah. Um, so yeah, you, you for these for these decks that are just trying to tap out for giant monsters mm -hmm. starting on turn four, mm -hmm. you just want to be like, yeah, cool, bro, dibs, yeah, yep. and then you just steal it, and then you <laughs> hit them with it, and then they're sad because they're dead. Is exactly. that? Yeah. <laughs> um, the other I think one, the other one is just to go faster, and I think that yeah. might be the plan he's on. I think I saw him yeah. board in a couple stone rights, uh, okay. things like that. So and you, you know, know that, drops is all the plan. That and like you were saying earlier, that's the way you beat uh, Alcorn's deck because mm -hmm. you, you go underneath mm -hmm. it, you just beat him before you can get much going on, that's right. and. That's really about the only weakness of this deck is it's pretty vulnerable to a deck that can beat him in maybe three or four turns. Right. So. Yeah. He's got. He has to get a Thrag Tusk online. He has to get a Thrag Tusk down to really stabilize. Right. If you curve out, and he almost can, certainly has to hit a Farsi. For sure. Yeah. yeah. You. He has to be able to cast Thrag Tusk on turn four. Yeah. Or put out a blocker that's a decent body before right. that. Right. <clears throat> and if you, you know, if you if you can play, you know, creature untap creature creature in the first two turns, that's a really that's a really tough start for yes. like to deal with. Yep. Especially if you can follow it up with something like, uh, um, like skull crack. So he plays that thrag tusk and he's like, I'm gonna gain five life and stabilize. Nope, like, nope you're gonna take three instead. <laughs> and then he's sad. Like he he just makes this big frown. Yeah. Even though he owns the shop, this is a great shop. It's and a great shop. Sad if you skull crack yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Alcorn wants to win just like anybody else. Oh, there goes a dish with his, his yeah. cheaty face cards. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. We, 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 know, we, know. we know that he's not cheating. Yeah, he's not cheating. But your opponent at a larger event, a BTQ, a yeah. Star City Open, they will not know yeah. that you're not a cheater. Yeah, this is, this is only okay at FNM. And it is. It's it, it most part mm, okay at FNM. Mm, you know, you might have people ask you yeah. to fix it up. But, you know, no big deal. Don't sweat it. This is the kind of thing, but this is the kind of time when when a more experienced player should be pointing that out to him Absolutely. and making sure that he fixes it. Yeah, um, because it's just good to be in those kind of habits, even at a local level. Exactly. At FNM. Yep. Because if you play if you play right at FNM, you're, you're going to play, play right, right in yep. a bigger room. Exactly. So we're looking at hands here. It looked like Alcorn had a far yeah. seek and some lands, which means it's keepable. Oh, yeah. here's a one drop out of dish. This looks. Yeah, this is what he wanted last time. Yeah, stone right, yeah, stone right. right. How do you beat it? You don't yeah, beat it. Yeah. It's a one one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, I think one of the best the, the one of the best plays that you can make here is either like um, uh, Ash Zealot for sure, mm -hmm. since Ash Zealot uh, gets uh, lots of benefits from having fire breathing. You know, first strike and all that. Of course, uh, okay. Lightning Mauler is also good. 
Um, or something, if he could have played like a one drop and then soul bonded them and, and then pumped, pumped the stone right Yeah. yeah. That, that all, that's also a decent start. But attacking for three on turn two, definitely where he wants to be. Pretty good. No, oh, no, no not have had a Farseek. So, Unless he's got, well, he may have an Azorius Charm. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's the only way he's going to keep one in his hands, right? Yeah. Another thing that he could have is Selesnya Charm. So the, these, uh, these Bant decks now, they play three copies of Selesnya Charm. Mm hmm. Ooh, yeah, gross. Syncopate that yeah. grab. Nope. And this is why you play your land. This is when your opponent ha is, has blue mana and has two lands out. Make sure to play your land if you have it. Yep. Um, you don't want Didn't have to have it in this case, but yeah, sure. if he had it, you're absolutely right. You play that first because otherwise your shit gets countered. Yeah. <laughs> your stuff gets countered? No, no. Anybody? No, no. no? We're, we're an SFW, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> So, uh, tap land for Alcorn. It's so, what are you saying about Selesnya Charm? Oh, oh another one. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, sure. Don't think of it for that one, bro. Ooh, and look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Yeah. He's not even swinging. No, he's swinging with the stone right. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, there are a couple of really good reasons not to swing with the stone right here. Yeah. The first one is that Selesnya Charm, like, I've been trying to mention, yeah. but I keep getting interrupted by Madcap skills. Yeah. Um, so the Selesnya Charm, it just makes a 2-2 with yeah. Vigilance. Yeah. And then, like, the guy just jumps right in the way. Yep. like, oh, yeah, you swung with dudes, block. Yep. So like, <laughs> even here, like, you can't block the dude with the Madcap skills, mm -hmm. but if he's swinging with that Stone Right, you can like, turn you off his fire breathing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sure. Like, yeah. you, just, you just jump in the way and eat that Stone Right. So here, Alcorn's got to worry about uh, kind of taking a little too much damage. Um, he doesn't have any blockers on table. No. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Three guys with mad cap. Yeah, pres presumably oh, he had a resto angel in the hand and was, yeah. was hoping that. Well, even at that, he can't. Yeah, no, you yeah. wouldn't be able to walk in. Yeah, he can't do anything. So, like, a, a, the, his best case scenario here. <laughs> his best case scenario would have been restoration angel at end of turn after taking six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. That turn. Yeah. After taking nine would have been the restoration angel and and, and drag then tusk. drag tusk yeah. to be able to block one of guy. those creatures and yeah. take another. Four yeah. plus, you know, fire breathing damage. So off the other it was it was looking bad. So anyway, yeah. So Dish got exactly what he needed, uh, yeah. and and like we were talking about earlier, you go underneath, and that's exactly what he did. He went yeah. underneath. Um, yeah. So the the one thing to note is that uh, the way that he went underneath here was kind of a, a really really all in strategy yeah. of dropping madcap skills on my one drops. Now this is okay if you know your opponent doesn't have removal. Um, but Alcorn's packing four copies of Azorius Charm. If the creature's too big, it'll get hit by Selesnya Charm as yep. well with that Madcap skills on yep. it. Uh, so it's it's kind of you can have some trouble here uh, getting blown out uh, by simply trying to overload uh, one threat with a. Uh, with yeah. some number of enchantments. It's the same problem. Most most of the red decks now don't play Madcap skills, but instead they play Volcanic Strength, yeah. since mountains are in almost every deck in Standard. Right. Um, and and that additional toughness problem. is a big deal. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. And the, But the Mountain Walk is it's also, it's very, also a big deal. It's, it's an all-around decent card. Um, yeah. And if you're playing these all-in kind of strategies, you're not really worried about getting two-for-one, because, well, it even works. They, they, they have it or they don't. They have it or they don't. That's true. If they do, you're in for a world of hurt, though. So yeah. it's it's something to consider when you're when you're playing cards like this in yeah. the open mana. Exactly. Okay, so let's see. We can't really see the opening hands. Alcorn's got a couple of land. There's a white water card in there, I believe. The his only white water card is Silk Lash Spider. Yep, there it is. That seventh edition Silk Lash Spider that he was <laughs> he was so looking forward to playing that yeah. night. <laughs> so he's got his he's got his big two seven. That thing's never gonna die. Nope. There's no possible way Dish could ever assemble enough nope. guards <laughs> to kill that creature. <laughs> and and more than that, I mean, there's really no no case where where Brian would allow that kind of thing to happen. Oh he's, sure, he's going to watch out for that kind of thing. And you know, well, no, I mean, even if it does, right? Like, so so what? What the the minimum number of cards for the red deck to kill a Silk Flash Spider three. is three. Yeah. And if you are trading one giant spider for three of his so cards, yeah. yeah, you're 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 dropping the thumbs up yeah. and smiling all the way yeah. to the bank. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a okay. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's right. a okay. Right. All right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I don't know what I'm gesturing at, but. <laughs> Is that something that looks happening. like a dramatic rescue? But I don't think it's a dramatic rescue. No, no dramatic rescue. <laughs> I don't think I'm worth playing dramatic rescue. <laughs> All right, Rackus Cackler. That's the kind of start the dish is looking for. There it is. Even on the draw, that's a that's a very very strong start. So Alcorn would like to see if Arsic here, even though 
Uh, he could end up getting hit for four. Farseek is still typically the right play, especially on the on the play mm -hmm. for these ramp decks. Now, Dish really wants a haste creature here, Ash Zealot or Lightning Mauler, <clears throat> to be able to come across, since one of these creatures is probably going to bite the dust. Right. Oh, no, Earthquake. Madcap skills. That. Nope. Yeah, we got we got to syncopate it again. All right, with syncopate, uh, yeah, I think that's that's an okay play. Uh, holding off on the far seeker that syncopate. Yep. Because you don't want to get blown out by that Madcap. Well, I mean, again. like we've said the past few times, that's the only way he loses. You know, sure. Is if he lets him resolve these early threats. Yep. I mean, these low cost things in the first couple of turns. So syncopate really. I mean, if he didn't have three Madcap skills last game, syncopate right. would have been all star last game, and right now Absolutely. it's proven to be a very valuable card. Yeah, it's a little weird. You you tend to actually take out the the counter spells mm -hmm. against these really quick aggro decks when you're playing control. Mm -hmm. But Syncopate's one of those weird cards where it can it can be effective as early as turn two. Right. So I I'm pretty sure that Alcorn would have taken out um, say the Dissipates because yeah. they're a little too slow. Yeah. But the Syncopates can still be decent. Like yeah. when it's he gets to manly, like it's sure. manly yeah. in both games. Yeah. yeah. So because I mean he gets to situations like this where he gets to four mana and he can. Uh, tap tap two for a Farsi, mm -hmm. and then since the red deck is running so few lands, it's uh, a lot of times syncopates is going to be a hard counter. Right, even just for one. Exactly. Every time it's going to be a hard counter. So, yeah, he's going to pay two, and this either heralds uh, Restoration Angel or well, a, now uh, it's Restoration Angel. Right? Sure, okay. yeah, or Farsi, yeah, you know, Farsi can the counter spell. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> those should have been the really the two options, right? Yeah, we see. As soon as he passes, now. yeah, we, it's got to be Restoration. Angel. So now uh, Dish has really got to be thinking about that and how to play around it. He'd really like a green land here. Oh, there it is. So he's got the green land, and now he wants that Rampager in hands. And I really don't like tapping that green mana before combat. I don't like that at all. So you're obviously attacking into Restoration Angel again, just like you did in game one. Right. Uh, and if you attack with just the Rakdos Cackler, you're representing that Gorklan Rampager, uh -huh. and maybe he doesn't block. Yeah. Like, maybe maybe he flashes in the Resto Angel and uh -huh. in the turn instead of trying to block the Cackler because he knows he's going to lose. And that's two points of damage. For sure, yeah. Got it. yeah. yeah. I mean, he got in two, but he had yeah. to throw away a 3-3 three, exactly. uh, three, three to do it yeah. for, for, no, for nothing, right? Right. So, like, you're not even trading one for one with the Restoration Angel like you would have with the Gorklan right. Rampager. Right. Yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of thing you want to think about. Just like know what your opponent could have, especially remember what you've seen in the previous games. Mm -hmm. Like this is not the first time Alcorn has made this play but <laughs> in this match. In this match, yeah. yeah so and you know, in the current standard, I mean, Restoration has been around for a really long time. Big thing. If your opponent has four mana and one of them is white, it's your turn. He probably has a Restoration. <laughs> exactly. Angel. Yeah. Especially if he uh, paid for an untapped yes. shock yep. land yep. Uh, to do it, and he, yeah. and also the 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like if he if he paid for that, especially in a match like this, you know that he's got yeah. he's got that rest of angel. Yep. So here, Alcorn's agonizing over uh, how which land to play and how to play it. I believe he's got a shock land. Um, so this kind of tells me that maybe he's not. He doesn't have Thrag Tusk. Since if he had Thrag Tusk, he would even, he would even just gain three life. Right. Like, it's it's good to just get the body out and gain the three life. Right. So we've got some maybe another Resto Angel. There's no attack here, so maybe not another Resto Angel. So this is uh, more counter magic. So yeah, he's got he's he's got the Silk Lash Spider, but that's not something you really want to pay two life to play. No. no. If it was a Thrag Tusk, you slam it. But Silk Lash Spider not quite as effective in this match. At least not not typically. Yeah. <laughs> Now he's he's a kind of a healthy life total at twelve. Mm -hmm. So if I'm Malcorn, I actually think that I swing with that Resto Angel there, um, because the one card that you're afraid of, you know, the whole reason you brought in the Spider is uh, Thunderbolt Hellkite. Right. And if he taps off Thunderbolt Hellkite, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That Resto Angel is out of way. But we haven't done the Domri. Now Domri again, there's no fighting to be had, so Domri is going to tick up. Um, the nice thing about uh, Domri Raid is that when he ticks up, he gets out of Resto Angel yep. uh, range. So the Resto Angel can't kill him in one swing without some help, which is really, really nice. Okay, so Alcorn allows it to resolve, and yep. as you predicted, presumably, yeah. I mean, what else is there? <laughs> right, you can't, you're not going to fight that. Uh, and they're Ash Zealot. They, they're, they're best friends. Yep, not so. sad. You might as well go ahead and cast that Ash Zell. Unless, unless you have the Searing Spear. If he has a Searing Spear, then you attack into this Restoration Angel. Right. Um, even just with the 2-2. Uh, because... Uh, you, you, and you like know you were that. saying earlier, I mean, maybe you bluff that even. Sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, you can't you can't really overstate the the bluff 
Uh, in especially when you're playing such a su such a limited resource deck like Mono yeah. Red, like yeah. you've got you don't have any card draw, you don't have uh, but a few game ending threats that you may or may not be able to cast when you manage them. Mm -hmm. So you really have to make the most out of every bit that you get uh, with your draw steps. Yeah. And a lot of times, it's just kind of being able to bluff, you know. Uh, Testing what your opponent knows about. Sometimes they don't know about it. Yeah. Like, sometimes if they have no idea, War Clan Rampager is usually in this deck. Then they're just going to block every time, and yeah. it don't matter. Uh -huh. <laughs> but if you know that your opponent's decent, you can probably get them with a bluff from time to time. Yeah. Yep. Right, one, so of the, one of those deep nuances of magic uh -huh. makes it great. Mm -hmm. Wizard poker. Detention sphere. Yep. That Domri is out of here. Holla at you, Domri. He is. He has been escorted to the D cell. <laughs> I got, I got a I got a cousin on D block. Oh yeah, great yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> the same way with Domri. He's a, he's a great kid. He's just he's fell in with the wrong crowd. Did all of your cousins deck. go to, to the D block as soon as he got <laughs> removed because <laughs> all the same class. <laughs> no, he, well, he, there were no twins. There okay, were no twins. Okay, okay. <laughs> that would be the worst. A <laughs> real life detention field. <laughs> uh, so uh, here's a decent play. We've. Uh, Dish finally found a burning tree emissary so that he could he get a, get himself a little value. Uh, two creatures for two mana is not too bad. But Rest of Angel on the other side says anybody does. Yeah, like, come at me, bro. But bring it across. Yeah. I dare you. Yeah. So, yeah, and Dish is giving away a lot of information with that. He doesn't have any type of removal. He doesn't have a Gork Land Rampager. So, so and he also uh, tapping the green mana was another mistake on Dish's part there. I think. Because you can cast the for the emissary red. for double yeah. red and yeah. get the green out of it. You make Brian think that you've got a core exactly, yeah. for blood rush and yeah. But, but again, that's okay. If that's you okay, Dish. You're you go. still good. Sure, yeah. Um, okay, so Thrak Tusk. But, I mean, Dish, man, he doesn't even have it in his deck. Maybe he's not running Gork Land Rainbow. Oh, he 100% is. Oh, no, was he? Yeah, okay. Because, uh, like, I mean, that's the thing. Like, if you don't have it in your deck, and then why would you play, do it? Yeah, yeah. Like, why would you buff it? Yeah. Right? But no, the, the, even if you don't have it in your deck, especially if you don't have it in your deck, yeah. you bluff it because yes. it, it, they'll play around it. Yeah. If they play around it once, they're going to play around it the whole match. Oh, okay. boy. So, it's happened enough this game that we'll, we'll just go ahead and stop for a moment. Okay, great. Madcap skills. That's a great card. Yeah. He continues to tap the stomping yeah. ground. Uh, you know, he's playing the game, he's on camera, those kinds of things. He's not thinking about it super clearly. That's fine. No shame. But remember right. this. Only tap what you need. Yeah. And in this case, you don't need to be using your super awesome red green land. Tap when, mountains. When in doubt, save as many colors of mana as possible. Yes. For multiple reasons. I mean, you know, first and foremost, you might have something you want to do in your second main phase. Sure. If you don't have that to do, you're just representing to your opponent more options. And it, mm -hmm. you know... More options they have to think about, the worse it becomes for them. So absolutely. But and there's the traitorous blood. Now I don't I don't really like the traitorous blood here because this is not lethal. Yeah, <laughs> you, you normally <laughs> have a, a good rule of thumb for traitorous blood is uh, unless you have other plans, uh, you just you only use it when you can after strike your opponent because otherwise it ha it doesn't ha it just hasn't done that much. So I, I mean here uh, he could have swung with the boar, gotten Alcorn to eleven. And then he has a blocker back for the Thrag Tusk if he wants to. And his Traitor's Blood is 190% lethal next yes, turn. Yes. No matter what Alcorn plays. Unless, I mean, unless he leaves the Thrag Tusk back and like plays, plays some sort of other monster. Right, but now he's just in a straight up race. So, sure. Yeah. And, yeah. And then Supreme Verdict. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's, and their Dish has no cards in hand, I believe. So right. I, I believe that's, that's probably going to be a death knell, but he, he, Alcorn's a two, so if he's got burn in his deck, like, it, right now Alcorn's just sweating one time, no serious. <laughs> one time, no serious. One time, no serious. And there's the Gorblain Ramp. Yeah. Like, and it's great to cast it here, but man, wouldn't that have been nice? Yeah. You know, any, any previous yeah. turn. And having the option to blood rush it, like, mm -hmm. yeah, say, just save as many colors as possible. If you can tap a basic instead of a dual land, always do it. tap the basic. Always do it. Always tap the colorless lands unless you're going to use them for some spell ability. So here, Alcorn just wants to gain life <laughs> any way possible. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, that four four with Trample is staring him down on the other side, and it's it's a uh, it's an it's nasty. Maybe maybe Dish is gonna go run a runner here and have the Gore Clan into Gore Clan for the Blood Rush on the next turn, and that's something that uh, Alcorn definitely has to take into consideration. Yep. So he'd be losing one if he just blocks with the with the Beast Token. Mm -hmm. But if he has that Rampager, he's dead. Yep. So. 
How, yeah, yeah. how lucky does Al Gore think this is? <laughs> <laughs> this is what's happening here. I yeah. mean, even if he plays this that two seven, right? Mm-hmm. Like he mm-hmm. plays a well. Okay, what what could he rip off the top? What could Dish rip off the top? He could rip off a uh, steering gear, a, a mad cap skills, mad cap skills. Um, another Gore Cram, Gore Clan mm-hmm. Ranger, just like you said. Yeah. Uh, an Ash Zealot will be yeah. lethal. I mean, anything sure. with haste really will be lethal. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he's got a lot of like, Omri to fight. Like is that yep. really really good here? Yeah, be excellent. So there's a lot of live draws for him. And Alcorn, I think if Alcorn has a pump spell here or another creature to cast or a couple more creatures to cast, I think he goes ahead and pushes. Yep. Um since uh since that that three three beast is looking pretty sad in the face oh okay, you got a yep. here. Yep. Um he, that three three beast is looking pretty sad in the face of uh of a fourfold champ. Yep. Now here, I don't, I don't like that attack. Well, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Alcorn's exactly like you said. He's, he, he must not think the dish is very lucky. And yeah. what, what happens here? What, what do we get? Because like, uh, like you just said, add, I mean, you're, you're, you can play, you can't play around burn spells. You can play around Ash Zealot. Yes. And Flip of Four. Right. Both of which you know he has. Yeah. Plenty of. Yeah. So, yeah. Alcorn un, unpunished for, for not leaving the blocker back this turn. Yep. Uh, now, unless unless he had, well, he had his Zorius charge. Yeah, Zorius charge. Okay, all right, all right. That's, that's fine. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Now here... Alcorn okay. knows he has no cards in hand. Sure, 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 sure. We already know that what well, we can see on the top of his hand is right. Celestia Charm, and then he also has an Azorius Charm. So here you just kill him, right? You just bounce his uh, blocker and then give your... If he, if he can do both, yeah, right. then you just end the game. Yeah. But I actually, like, if you don't have Celestia Charm and Azorius Charm, uh-huh. I actually think I like just Azorius Charming the blocker. Like, just to put it back on top of his deck, because you know you're not dead next turn. Right, right. right? Like, so, yeah. So, he, but if he's so got dead draw, yeah. Dead draw. Yeah. Gives him a dead draw, and then 